Good morning. Thank you all for joining us. I actually probably should say good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are in the world. My name is Marjorie Green, and today I'm joined by Ricky Fairley and Allison Tischler. And we're here live from the Genentech campus in South San Francisco to talk to you about breast cancer, and specifically a subtype of breast cancer called triple receptor negative breast cancer. This is something that some of you may be very familiar with, others of you may not be as familiar with. And so we want to talk about this disease and how important it is to understand the differences in breast cancer as you or a family member or friend are dealing with this diagnosis. So to start with, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and then a little bit about triple receptor negative breast cancer. And then really we're going to focus on Ricky and Allison and hear their stories, the work that Ricky's doing, Allison's journey. And then what we'd like to do at the end is take questions from all of you who are watching. And so if you have questions, please type them in. We have someone who's off camera who'll be collating them and bringing them over to us so we can look at the questions and, and respond to them. I would like to flag that questions that are related to your personal diagnosis, your treatment, or the treatment diagnosis of a family member or friend are things that we can't address. If you have questions about your diagnosis or your medical treatment or side effects, please refer them to your physician who can provide information for you. So thank you so much for that, and we're really excited to get started. Yes. So, so thank you. So again, to start with, my name is Marjorie Green. My background, I'm a breast oncologist, and I had the privilege of taking care of people who had breast cancer for over 15 years. And then I joined Genentech about seven years ago, and my current role is I am the head of development for breast and gynecologic tumors. And the team of people that I work with are looking at new medicines trying to help improve the ability to control and hopefully cure breast cancer. I'm very passionate about the work that I do. I've moved from taking care of an individual person to working for groups of people. And so this is something that I just feel so strongly that we have a lot of room to make progress in. And understanding breast cancer and the differences of breast cancer will help us to be able to prevent it and mm -hmm. as well as cure it. And so, so that's a little bit about me. Everyone's going to have a different degree mm -hmm. of background of their understanding of breast cancer. So just to lay a found work, I'd like to talk a little bit about breast cancer. And then I'm going to be asking Ricky for, for some help in filling in the gaps a bit here. And so if you think about breast cancer, it seems like that's just one disease. And really, it's not. It's probably multiple different diseases that start in the breast. The breast is composed of lobules, which are the glands that make milk, and then ducts, which is what carries the milk to the nipple. And so you can have cancer start in either of those and then some other supporting tissue as well. And so you can imagine just from that, you're going to have more than one potential type of breast cancer. Most breast cancers are invasive ductal carcinoma. So invasive means the cancer cells have the potential ability to spread. You also can have invasive lobular carcinomas, and those are the two most common types of breast cancer. Breast cancer is further subdivided based upon things called markers or receptors. And the reason that this is done is that the behavior, how the cancer behaves or acts, is very much dictated by the absence or presence of these receptors. I like to think about receptors as sort of you think about you're taking your key and putting it into the ignition of your car. For those of us who still have keys that go into the ignitions of the car, your car starts and it goes. So if you have something like a, an estrogen receptor, so estrogen is a normal hormone in the body that, that influences breast tissue and it's involved in milk production. And you can have receptors for estrogen in the breast tissue, also in breast cancer. Progesterone is another receptor that is also, it's a hormone that's natural in your body that also can be in cancers and can be expressed in a way that the cancer cells can use normal hormones to grow and to divide. There is a third receptor called HER2 nu. That's a mouthful. Um, HER2 nu is a gene that's in every single one of our cells. And for unknown reasons, 20 to 30% of women who have breast cancer have extra copies of that gene. It's not hereditary, but when it's there, the cancer cells have lots and lots of this receptor, and it's like it has a little nuclear power plant, and those cancers grow and divide. And so you can have cancers from the breast that have estrogen receptor and or progesterone receptor 
and or HER2 new. And so you'll have hormone receptor positive breast cancers that have estrogen and or progesterone receptors. You can have HER2 new positive breast cancers that have, they all have HER2 new, and they may or may not have estrogen and or progesterone receptors. And the type that we're gonna talk about today is triple receptor negative breast cancer. And so you can tell by that name, these are cancers that have no high levels of estrogen receptors, progesterone receptors, and they have normal levels of HER2. So they are actually defined by the absence of these known receptors. And it's probably not just one disease, but multiple different diseases combined into one. And it's uncommon, it's about 15% to 20% of all breast cancers, but very important for us to talk about because the patient populations that it impacts and the treatments are a little different than other types of breast cancer. So maybe I wanna turn, and, and, and Ricky, first it'd be, I think, helpful for those watching to know a little bit about you and your story and your background and what you do, and then we'll talk a little bit more about triple negative breast cancer. Sure, um, I'm a seven year survivor of, tri of triple negative. I had stage 3A and then almost a year to the day, I became metastatic and, um, and I went back on chemo, I did a lot of therapy and God intervened and I'm still here. And so I'm very blessed and I know that God left me here to do this work and talk about breast health. So I do it every day, try to fight like a girl. Um, and it's funny that you, how you describe triple negative. When I first got it, well, triple negative, that sounds good. <laughs> you know, it's negative, so that sounds good. It was not. So I think that, um, that triple negative survivors, we fight a different fight. We have a different battle than other breast cancer survivors. And though I love all breast cancer survivors, I believe that you know, because we don't have targeted therapies and we can't prevent recurrence, you know, we, we are special. Allison and I are special, right? Yeah. And we all are special, but, and we deserve special treatment. So, so thank you for this forum and opportunity to talk. Um, triple negative is, is really a tough one, not only because you know, it's tough to, the therapy is not there, but also it affects African-American women at two to three times the rate, and women of Ashkenazi Jewish descent at, in really high numbers. It's also affecting young black women in incredible numbers, and young women across the board. So it's really, you know, I was kind of old when I got it, but I see so many young women struggling with it, and it's not a good place to be. So anything we can do to help that is a great thing, and, and you know, we don't want, I have two precious grandbabies. I don't want them to speak the words breast cancer, so that's why. I fight every day, every day. So. I think we're all united on that. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I think, but, but it's, it affects your whole life and your whole family. I know when I got breast cancer, I quit my life. I was a little crazy. Um, I had to get rid of all the cancers in my life, not just the one in my breast. So I did some crazy things, like I divorced my husband of 30 years. Oops. Um, I, um, I quit my business partners and I moved to the beach. And I realized that I had to find peace and take the stresses out of my life and, and you know, take care of myself. And, that's really important for all of us to do, and not don't wait till you have cancer to take care of yourself. As women, we take care of everybody. So, that, so that's important yeah, life yeah. lesson. You're right, yeah. and, and I'm sure that Allison's probably going to have a very similar yeah. story. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, I'm curious. You know, one thing you, know, you you talked a little bit about targeted therapies, and people may not understand what you mean by that terminology. Would you like to expand, or would you like me to expand sure, a little you, bit about well, that? Sure. You're the doctor. You should say. You should talk <laughs> right. about it. Right, yeah. Sure. So, mm -hmm. thing, so, so we talked about those receptors: the estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and the HER2 new receptor. And so, there are treatments specifically designed for those subtypes. Yes. But because triple receptor negative breast cancer doesn't have any of those receptors for a long time, for 20 years, chemotherapy was the mainstay or longer of, of treatment yes. for, for triple receptor negative. So targeted therapies are therapies that go specifically to target, whereas chemotherapy kills fast dividing cells. And so it's a different kind of therapy, but all of them are designed to, to attack cancer. Right. Is that a fair way? Yes, to, yes. and I, I think mm -hmm. what I was getting at too is that, that, um, that every other breast cancer has, it, has medications and mm -hmm. therapies you can do to prevent recurrence. Mm -hmm. Triple negative recurs more readily than other cancers and we don't have a drug to prevent recurrence at this point. So, yeah. so that's what makes us special. We have to, you know, we wake up every morning and think, okay, are we, when are we gonna get it again? When's mm -hmm. it gonna come back? Yeah, and I, I think you bring yeah. up a really important yeah. point is, you know, definitely one in eight women, unfortunately, are gonna develop breast cancer. Triple receptor negative breast cancer affects dispro disproportionately young women mm -hmm. um, and disproportionately I African American women compared yes. to Caucasian or Hispanic or other ethnicities. And, and people don't understand truly yet why that happens. Right. I'm curious, you know, you work with- Can I add a statistic yeah. there oh, please, too? Um, love it. 
African-American women are dying at a 42% higher rate from breast cancer than white women. Yeah. And triple negative is a big factor in, that, in those numbers. So that's why it's so important. I mean, that discrepancy is, is crazy. And so that's really important to, to know, you know, that we really have to take care of ourselves. I agree, and, and there, that's, there are multifactorial reasons probably behind yes. that statistic, but I agree that triple receptor negative breast cancer biologically um, is a quite aggressive yes. cancer, yes. and so that's why awareness of it is so right. Im it's important. important. And we're getting it at later stages, which makes it more difficult to fight. So yes. it, yeah, there is there is some information that it, you know, cancers that are estrogen fed are a little bit slower growing, slower dividing, and they're easier to pick up in mammograms potentially right. at at earlier stages where triple receptor negative cancers because they grow and divide quicker. Right. And sometimes people present with later disease at the time of diagnosis. Yes. Um, and, and that does uh, impact with the later stage of diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I, I would be really interested to hear in your work as an advocate and your work with the Triple Receptor Negative Breast Cancer Foundation, could you tell us a little bit about that? Um, we really view our Triple Negative Breast Cancer Foundation as kind of the repository for everything you need to know. I want to say that we are the Wikipedia of Triple Negative, mm -hmm. so we, we, we try to be the place to go where women can find a home, find other women. One of the best things about our website is that we have discussion groups. And so at any given moment, 24-7, you can go in and find somebody that's dealing with what you're dealing with. And I, I can give you an example that when I was sick, um, it was my, probably my second chemo, and I was starting to get bone pain at 4 a.m. And I started to think, oh my gosh, has it gone to my bones already? And I panicked, called my doctor. Of course, the doctor didn't answer the phone at 4 a.m. But I went into the discussion groups, and they said, Ricky, take a towel and go to bed. You're fine. It's really just your bone marrow recovering from, from the chemo. Um, and so just to have that reassurance. And I looked at the discussion groups actually this morning, and they were talking about all kinds of things. And so that's a really great place to be, to, to, to understand that. The other, the other thing, uh, the other really good resource is Sisters Network, Inc. And that's specifically for African-American women. So again, we are a repository of what, how to deal with it, you know, how to deal with it in our community. So those, those are great assets. But I, I believe that, um, you know, you have to fight like a girl. You have to change your life. You have to choose life every mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. and figure out what's going to work for you and know your body. And we can't prevent breast cancer, but we can early detect it. And the only way you're going to early detect it is to know you're normal and to check your breasts. I tell everybody, check the breasts that you love. I know you have a pair <laughs> every day. So it's really important to know your body and mm -hmm. fight for yourself. And I think Allison can really speak to that when yeah. she talks about yeah. knowing when something is not right that you have to call your doctor or find another doctor or, or find the resources that you need. You know, and, and our foundations, both, you know, both foundations actually help you do that. that that's right. So maybe I want to hear a little bit about Allison's story that I would yes. come back, because there are some yeah. things that you talked about I really would let, I think it'd be very helpful for people to know, and particularly about being your own advocate. Yes, and Allison has a great, great story about that, how, you know, I actually felt forced her to be her own advocate oh, one time when she had an issue. I was like, well, tell him to stop. You know, I think that, yeah. that um, I do believe there are protocols for every disease. You know, you do this, you do the chemo, you do eight weeks of this, you do this, you get the mm -hmm. PET scan. But guess what? Cancer doesn't have protocols. Mm -hmm. The disease does not have a protocol. They're gonna, it's going to do whatever it's it wants. It and so even though the doctor is following the regimen, the regimen mm -hmm. may not be right for you and for your cancer mm -hmm. in this moment. So. Good to know. Yeah. So Allison, would you please share about your story and your journey and what's brought you here today? Um, sure. So I'm Allison Tischler. I live in the New Haven, Connecticut area. I um, have. I'm a mom, a wife, and I'm working full time, working through all of this, which mm -hmm. I'm really proud of. You said um, And in uh, September, um, almost a year ago, September of 2018, um, I'm a market researcher, and actually Ricky and I were out doing market research, right. and and I felt something in my neck, and I was and I was starting to panic. Um, and, and I said, you know, Ricky, what is this? Do you have any idea? Um, and she said, I don't know, but go get it checked out. So um, I did, and of course I went into primary care. So, oh, nothing, you know, come back in a, in a few weeks. Then um, October. You're young. Right. Um, really? And then October, yeah. <laughs> around Halloween, I was starting to feel really, you know, really nasty cold, um, went, went back and saw primary care, and I saw the look on her face. And I, I knew it wasn't good. Um, anyway, um, I got, um, I had a biopsy, um, and in November of 2018, I 
got a phone call from my primary care doctor saying um, I have metastatic breast cancer. And um, that was not a good moment. Um, I, everyone asked, did you tell your family? Um, well, yeah, they were there when I got the call. And I, and I launched an F a giant F-bomb in the living room. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> then I went in to um, see my oncologist and um, to get more details. And, and he said it was triple negative. And, and I said, what? You've got, I literally said, what? You've got to be kidding me. Um, and because actually I knew a lot about triple negative because Ricky's been my friend for, for a lot of years. And I had it. Right. You're <laughs> the first person I called. Okay. And yeah. I said, what? How can I have triple negative? Um, isn't that um, more prevalent in African-American women? Um, wasn't you know, at all what I expected. Um, and also to be metastatic was And to shock. be metastatic. Um, I previously had um, estrogen positive cancer 10 years ago. So I was supposed to be celebrating my, my 10 year anniversary of being cancer free. But then I got dished this great, you know, this, this news. Um, so it was, it basically turned my life upside down for, for, for a little while. Um, and I sort of think about it through the seasons. I cried my way through Thanksgiving. Um, then went on treatment in December. <laughs> You're okay, baby. And I've been, I've been feeling really good. And she's and doing so well. Yeah. So well. So I'm not. I'm she not started letting chemo it, in December. I'm not letting it stop me. Right. Um, she's doing so well. So. So thank you so much yeah. for sharing that. So hard. I, I'm taped to the chair. I'd get up and hug you. Yeah. I know. So I'm trying to hug. Right. Yeah. Same so, way. Um, so, 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 Ricky, so Ricky came to New Haven with me for my first chemo. Um, it was Ricky and. A couple of other and friends Janice, yeah. and Janice and Ricky gave me my pink boots. I gave her some pink warrior boots. Um, See my boots? Can you uh, see um, I have this collection of pink warrior boots. It's like yeah. fabulous. You're kicking um, cancer. Yeah, we're, we're with kicking boots. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then, um, but anyway, since then I've been, uh, you know, on treatment and actually, you know, feeling good and living my life, and I just feel, um, I, I feel, I feel really blessed, um, and. You know, really living life to the fullest. Um, in that time, actually, in December, I went to Israel for the first time, um, which was amazing. And I went to France this summer. So we're just just keeping busy and um, leading an active life and not letting it stop me. One of the things that happened um, and through the process was um, we were going to the theater to see a play, and we were going with. Um, my friends, my other board members from the Triple Negative Breast Cancer Foundation. And I was late because another friend was making me late. And so I said, you guys just go to dinner without yeah. me. So Allison was able to have dinner with two board members from the foundation yeah. and learned a lot about Triple Negative right before, before you were diagnosed. Before I even knew I had it. Um, before so, I even knew I had it. So it was uh, a great resource. All yeah, of a sudden when yeah. she had it, then she had all these doors open to get yeah. information and have friends yeah, in, the, yeah, in the world. Yeah. So I felt really blessed. Um, and I mean, even though it's you know, not, not the diagnosis one would hope for, but I just couldn't believe that I stepped into this where, where I knew the whole, I knew a lot of the triple negative world. I even knew one of the pharma companies involved um, and had become friends with them. So by the time this, this happened, I, I, I knew a fair amount and, and that was really comforting because I, I, I had my tribe to, to support me. I think you know you bring up important point. There are a couple of areas in here. Is one for people who are diagnosed, or they have a family member or friend who's diagnosed with breast cancer, particularly triple negative. How do they even start? This is an overwhelming yeah, diagnosis it is. It is. and it's yeah. paralyzing. And yeah. you were better prepared yeah. than uh, most people. So how did? What do you recommend to people about how they process this? How do they get information? What questions should they be asking their doctors? What would you all say to the to people watching? I, I mean, for me, the most important thing has been to form human connections um, with people, with organizations, um, and to not go online. Um, even though I am a researcher, um, and that's what I do in my life, I don't want to go online. I don't want to read statistics, so I don't. Um, I, I think, for me, it's been really important to connect with the foundation, people like Ricky, um, to go to conferences, Living Beyond Breast Cancer Conference, um, I don't think she's watching this because she doesn't watch Facebook. She doesn't use Facebook. But I met a really great friend there who saw me. Uh, basically, I was looking at some. They were presenting some data, and it made me cry because it was really upsetting. But then this woman came up to me and gave me a hug, and she said, "I've been dealing with this for eight years, and 
and now I talk to her, you know, once a week. Um, so I think it's just about finding, finding people who are, who are going through it, um, and also, uh, or who've been through it. Um, finding um, the right organizations that will help you, and also finding the right doctor, um, which has been really important to me. Um, for me, it's been a, an evolution um, of going to an increasing the doctors with an increasingly high specialization in TNBC. Um, originally, I started with a you know really wonderful doctor whose specialization is not breast cancer and not TNBC, and then and then Ricky actually made me, and I'm really <laughs> grateful. She said, um, "You need to call someone in New York. You know these specialists. You need to call her um, and get on her calendar." And, and I did, and, and and I talked to her, and you know she's just one of the you know the leading specialists and. When you talk to some a, a doctor who specializes in TNBC and who does the research, you feel I felt different. I felt I felt understood. I felt a lot of hope because you're special, uh, right? I felt <laughs> hope because of the um, because of everything that's going on and and all the the trials and and some of what's going on is not going to be known to someone who doesn't specialize in TNBC. The thing is the. TNBC is changing and evolving, and even an oncologist who, you know, who's brilliant, and you know, top doctor, if he or she doesn't follow the TNBC, they're not. Gonna, they may not be able to fill you with that hope of things that are coming. So I guess in a, in a nutshell, my recommendations are: connect with other people, mm -hmm. connect with organizations like the Triple Negative Breast Cancer Foundation, um, Living Beyond Breast Cancer. It's been really helpful. Um, and really fight your way. You know, you might have to fight to go see a TNBC doctor. You know, I certainly did. I wrote a letter to my health insurance, and I said, I said, look, I need to see a TNBC specialist. And I gave them the statistics. I said, TNBC is 15% of all breast cancers. I need to know. I need to speak to somebody who works in this. Um, and I did, and that's been really game changing. It's hard to not do Dr. Google. You know, we all kind of go to Dr. Google, and especially your family will go to, you know, my daughters went straight to Google. Yeah, what do I do? And so the one thing good about it is that, that when you Google triple negative now, our foundation comes up first. So just yeah. click there yeah. and stay there. Don't go anywhere else. So I think yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. But, but I think Allison made a really good point about your tribe. Mm -hmm. um, I had so many friends from my whole life just come and take care of me, and they just showed up. They didn't ask, you know, wait for me to ask for help. And so it's so important to have this you know, support system. I actually started a club of them called SMAD, Sisters mm -hmm. Making a Difference. And now we just party you know, because I'm better. But we've all helped each other through different things. So the tribe is really important and yeah. having the resource. But, but the doctor thing is really critical. You yeah. have to be comfortable with your doctor. And, mm -hmm. and as you know, you know the work that you're doing. You, know, you see what's going on in the marketplace, so in, in the world of triple negative. So you need to be around people that know that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and believe it or not, a lot of doctors don't know about our disease. They don't have experience with it. My doctor, she had had two cases before me. She was 38. She gave me two years to live. I'm on seven. She was wrong. And she took it upon herself to learn. She went with me to another specialist. Thank God for her. But, but you know, that doesn't always happen. And so I think people who don't have information, the information is there on our website, and it can help you. We have an 800 number. We have. Um, you know, and the, and the support group. So there's lots of information to find if you just go to the right place. Don't stay on Google, just go there. So for, mm -hmm. you know, for your family members and friends who want to help, and they say they go to Dr. Google, yeah. I, what, would, what kind of advice would you give them? You, you talk about getting a tribe of people, yeah. a lot of it who have the same similar experience or shared experiences, but your families and friends yeah. may not have that. Right. Yeah. How can they help if someone's been diagnosed with breast cancer? They can listen. And you know, it's really hard, we were talking about this yeah. earlier, how people who've never had cancer, they just don't get it. We love you. Thank you for everything that you say. I know I had so many people like start crying when I told them I was yeah, sick. Yeah. Like, why are you crying? I'm the cancer, you know, so. So they, they don't know, people don't know what to say. They don't know what to say. They don't really know how to help. Their intentions are awesome, but they don't know how to help. So. So just, they should just listen. They should just listen to you and let you work through it, mm -hmm. you know, yourself, and, and try to help you find resources that you need. But, you know, they're out there. They just have to help you. Like, and and everybody, everybody has a story. You know, everybody has a story and a way to do it. 
they just have to listen to you. And it's because you know in your gut yeah. what feels good. And, and then talking to other survivors is really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I find, I remember going to my first triple negative group meeting, and it was like just coming home. Yeah. It was like coming home. And I had talked to many breast cancer survivors, but when I talked to TNBC survivors, they had a, we have a different perspective on things just because mm -hmm. of the recurrence. Mm -hmm. And so It's a different language. It's a different like language. And even when I was speaking to a TNBC doctor, you just feel like all of a sudden everyone speaks your language and everybody gets you. Yeah, um, and, and they know, yeah. they know, they have a different sense of knowledge. It's yeah, great. yeah, yeah. It, it um, as far as your earlier question, though, about what people can do, um, yeah, we don't expect our friends to, to know all the details, nor do we even need them to. And I think, you know, I definitely echo listening, but I also think just keeping life busy and fun and active, and um, one of the things that's really helped me is your sort of network of friends and family. Um, we have this am amazing neighborhood where we live. Um, when I was sitting there, knowing I probably had a bad news coming, everybody was sort of a moment's notice away. Um, the minute I got my diagnosis, I texted out to the neighborhood. My neighbor Aaron showed up at the door, um, and you know they're just there for you. And you know my neighborhood has been there for me, keeping me busy, um, having having parties, um, and, and also just some incredible acts of of kindness um, that that people have done. So. Yeah. I have a dance party every day with yeah. whoever I'm around. Yeah. So wherever I am, with, the yeah. other thing is, they can do the laundry. Yeah. They can bring feed your kids. They can do things that, that that can let you have peace from your chores. You know what I mean? I think that's what I would say. You know, when your friends come over, give them a job because they don't. They want to help, but they don't know what to do. So give them a job that you just don't feel like doing today. Yeah. Laundry always works. <laughs> do you yeah. find that that for people I'm thinking of for people who may not necessarily have the same great friend network or resources, yeah. you know, there are support groups often that yeah. that, yeah. that your, your doctors can help. You, you know, the foundation's a good resource. The discussion mm -hmm. groups. Um, discussion groups. There are some other good web. Like American Cancer Society has some mm -hmm. good yeah. information. Cancer.gov yeah. has some good yeah. information. There are yeah. some and factual sisters network. We have uh, chapters in in you know a bunch of cities, 19 cities, and so. We're around, and we can find, you know, you can pick up the phone and call somebody or email them, and mm -hmm. people will get back to you and help you do whatever you need. That's good. You know. when, when you are first, I, you know, you were well-educated about, yeah. about triple negative breast cancer going in there. What questions, when someone's been told that they have this diagnosis, mm -hmm. and, you know, what should they be asking their, their doctors? Really? Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's funny because now, now that I know so much more, I would ask more because I think that, um, you know, to your earlier point, triple negative breast cancer means a lot of things. And it, it's sort of this catch-all for everything that's not defined. Yeah. So I would want to know, well, what do you know about my triple negative? Because it's not, because triple negative doesn't tell you very much, really, because it's just the absence. But what, what do you know? What patterns do you see? Um, what's the trajectory? Um, and I'd also want to know, you know, what does a good scan look like? What is a bad scan? Um, because I have had some good scans and I've had, had, had some bad scans. But one of my bad scans, or so I thought, when I went to this leading doctor in New York, she said, it's not that bad. And, and I had spent two days crying mm -hmm. over this bad scan. But I think it's just that perspective of how to, you know, how do I view this disease? You know, we know there's no, you know, we know there's no cure. We know there's no, you know, there, there's not one treatment that's going to take care of it. But how do you kind of view it? You know, what, what's, what does good look like? And that's something I'm kind of learning. You know, part of what good looks like is if you feel good. Yeah. You know, if you feel good, then that, and that's one of the things that the doctor in New York told me. If you feel good, that's almost as important as what the scan is telling you. Um, that is important. I think yeah. also I would ask, what is your personal experience with triple negative breast cancer? That's the first question yeah. I would ask so, yeah. that they, so that you know that they're the right doctor for you. Because yeah. my doctor wasn't the right doctor mm -hmm. for me. And Allison had the same thing. Yeah. So get their assessment on their, their experience with yeah. what we have and understand that well. And then go get more help if you need it. Um, but also, you know, you have to live your life every day. You have to figure out what works for you, you know, how you should eat, how you should act. But I say, yeah. 
you know, we, we both, Allison said, we try not to let anything rain on our parade. We're yeah. going to go to work. We're going to feed the kids. We're going to go shopping. We're going to go to the theater. We're going to yeah. do everything yeah. that we did and that we love and try not to let the disease stop us for as long as you can. I mean, I think you have to do, you just have to live your life and, mm -hmm. and know that you can beat it. And I think the most important thing, though, is having faith, having mm -hmm. faith and knowing in your spirit that you're going to be okay. Yeah. And trusting that God has you and, and, ha and like live, you know, we have your faith that mm -hmm. you know you're going to be fine mm -hmm. and you just have to, you know, do the work, you know, do the work, take the medications, do the therapies, fight like a girl, but just have faith every day. Yeah. D would you recommend, you know, because triple receptor negative breast cancer is the absence of, of these receptors, do you, did you talk to your doctors at all about the testing that they did? And, and, and did they do anything else to look at the tumors? Did you have those kind of discussions? Are those things helpful to talk about mm -hmm. with physicians? A little bit, but at the end of the day, you know, most people don't really understand or don't really care. Like, yeah. I, it is what it is, mm -hmm. you know, so what are you going to do for me? You know what I mean? So, you know, this is the, if this is the makeup of my tumor, what can you do for me? What, how can you help me? It's like, what's in it for me? But you want to make certain that they know what they it know is. they know what it is. Exactly. Right. So, but that's they've done why the testing they need to, to yes, be concerned yes, this is what yes. it is mm -hmm. and this is the biological yes. characteristics. Yeah. When, you're, when yeah. you're sick, though, you know, you're sick. Yeah. They're telling you these horrible, these horrible things. And, and so you really don't, aren't thinking clearly. You know, you're, you're just, you know, like you're in shock and you're dealing with all the emotions of being, had, having, getting this diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So you don't always ask the right questions, but that's why you need a support system or you need a resources to yeah. go to because, you know, you're sick. Yeah. And, and, you know, if I could do my job as well, you know, and, and I'm, I'm really good at my job, right? So I want the doctor to be really good at their job. And you have to, we yeah. have to count on that because yeah. that's what they do. That, that's, that's really helpful. It's, um, what have you seen, what are some common misconceptions or, or things that you hear people say about triple receptor negative breast cancer that's not accurate that maybe we you know in our remaining few minutes before we go to questions that we can talk about well I think it's just breast cancer in general too well you know my mom didn't have it so I don't have it I'm not gonna get it to me that's the biggest thing and, and most people don't know that only 5% of cancer is hereditary and so you know that they do need to be checking their breasts and they do need to know their health. I mean that's the biggest misconception that mm -hmm. I see that mm -hmm. that people just don't think they're going to get it. You know, and nobody does. We didn't think we were going to get it. Yeah, I mean people often think it's caused by something you did or where right. you live or the kind or, of bra you wear um, or, or something crazy. Fault. Yeah, it's not your, it's fault. Not your fault. I mean, I've always eaten really well. I've exercised. And, you know, for me personally, there's nothing in my genes that's been looked at. So there's no family history. So I think when people try to, people try to pin it down to a cause, and that can't be done. So and it shouldn't yeah, be a death yeah, sentence, yeah. especially for Black women. It yeah. shouldn't. Breast cancer should not be a death. It should be, it should be early detected. We should find the lump, and we should, you know, um, do the right thing. So definitely awareness of, yeah. of what's yeah. going on in your body. And yeah, your just breast knowing your body. Important. And I think, mm -hmm. I think young women should start checking their breasts, you yeah. know, early, like at 15 when they hit puberty. And yeah. I know a lot of doctors don't think that because I know your breasts change over time. But we should know our bodies. We should know what we feel, what normal feels like, so that when we do feel something abnormal, we can get it checked. Yeah. And know when to get it checked. Also, you know, if you do have something abnormal, get it checked. I know a lot of black women will let, will let it go for a while and say, oh, I'm, God's going to take care of me, or I don't really have time because I have to feed my kids. If I don't go to work, I'm going to be, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. going to feed my kids. And so a lot of other sort of issues come into play, and they don't get a check, and then it's not good. So take care of yourself. Take care of yeah. yourself. We don't, yeah. you know, as women in general, we're yeah. taking care of everybody else. So. so I'm curious, did either of your doctors talk to you about clinical trials? Uh, as being options and and Ricky how do you help people navigate because it can be overwhelming um, all the different standard options as well as potential options that are out there it's really hard and I did a clinical trial my second time around when I was metastatic mm -hmm. and um, um, but my doctor just recommended it because I asked you know I she brought it up to me I think though it's really hard and Allison okay. just was going through this now I mean she's a very brilliant woman she's a researcher she has a PhD mm -hmm. It's crazy to navigate the yeah, system. And yeah. I think we do have resources on the websites about it. But still, once you sort of get into it, the, num the data that you have to collect and put together, dealing with your insurance company, to be able to go to see another doctor, getting into the trial, it's very hard. And then there's a lot of stigma around trials with African-American women mm -hmm. because of you know, historical things. But the only way we're going to learn and help other people and help ourselves 
is to do clinical trials. It's so important to, to embrace that science and you know, try to do something good for yourself as well as other people. So mm -hmm. I think you know, I want to thank you both so much for your honesty, your vulnerability, for sharing your journey with us and everyone who's watching. Um, we are going to close me torturing y'all with questions, <laughs> and, and we're going to open up to questions from those who are viewing. So, okay. so Great. I want to thank you again so much, and thank you all for, for joining us today.